And after a highly successful 2023, the Indian Space Agency or ISRO is geared up for its maiden launch of this new year. India's PSLV C-58 mission is all set to launch the X-ray polarimeter satellite or ExpoSat today. It will just take place in a short while from now. The mission is the first dedicated polarimeter mission of the nation. The ExpoSat mission will try to unravel the mysteries of black holes. ExpoSat will uh, launch into an eastward low inclination orbit at 9.10 a.m. local time today. The satellite will be launched from the Satish Dhawan Space Center located in Sri Harikota in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The mission will be studying the 50 brightest known sources in the universe. The new satellite seeks to understand the intricacies of bright celestial X-ray sources, this by examining their complicated dynamics under harsh circumstances. The ExpoSat spacecraft is carrying cutting-edge technology, which is designed particularly for low Earth orbit exploration. The satellite's configuration is adapted from the IMS-2 bus platform, with the mainframe systems drawing from the heritage of IRS satellites. According to ISRO, the mission life stands to about five years. ExpoSat carries two primary payloads, Polix, which is a polarimeter instrument that helps in taking X-rays. The second payload is EXPECT, which studies the X-rays and timings in the space. Well, now, in layman terms, a payload refers to the valuable cargo a spacecraft carries, like satellites, scientific instruments or equipment. It's something that we send to space for specific purposes, whether it's communication, exploration or research. Let's now dive deeper into the specifications of these payloads, starting with Polix. Well, the payload will help measuring polarization of X-rays in the energy band originating from approximately 50 potential cosmic sources. Now, to achieve these polarization measurements, the payload will employ the Thomson scattering technology. Let's also now tell you what exactly is the Thomson scattering technology. Well, it's like sunlight bouncing off a mirror. It helps one to understand how X-rays behave by looking at how they scatter or bounce off other particles in space. Moving on to the second play payload, uh, we're talking about EXPECT. It will conduct a long-term spectral and studies of cosmic X-ray sources in the set energy band. The payload will focus on examining X-ray emissions from different cosmic sources. And for more uh, on this upcoming launch, we are now being joined live by correspondent Siddharth MP, who is joining us live from Sri Harikota in the, in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. Welcome to the show, Siddharth. Now, ExpoSat is the first dedicated satellite from ISRO to carry out research in space-based polarization and also study the world of black holes. Well, it's India's first polarimeter satellite. Only NASA has attempted such a mission before India. Talk to us about how long is this mission expected to take place and what this means for India. Hello, Raisha. Let me start by saying that X-rays simply put our high energy light that is originating from space. So it can be from various celestial sources. So what happens is when X-rays travel through space and eventually reach towards the Earth, they actually carry a lot of information along with them. So there's a lot of data embedded within the X-ray light itself. So it helps us understand where it's coming from, what is the event that is emitting these X-rays. It helps understand a lot of phenomena and understand some mysteries of the universe. But what we have to remember is that when the X-rays approach Earth, there's the Earth's atmosphere which acts as a shield. So this atmosphere completely blocks out the X-rays. So on the surface of the Earth, it's not possible to study these X-rays. Alternatively, what do you do? You actually put a satellite around Earth orbit or around the Earth. And essentially from there, that satellite will be able to use its sensors or payloads, as you had pointed out, to study these X-rays. So on receiving these X-rays, it can analyze these X-rays and offer the data to researchers and astronomers. And using that, they can find out where are these X-rays coming from, what is the event causing these X-rays. Because typically, X-rays are known to originate from black holes or dead stars. So these are dead and decaying stars, and that's where X-rays are known to originate from. 
So what is causing this phenomena? And typically, X-rays are also emitted from certain phenomena that involve a lot of disturbance and a lot of um, collision between matter and space. And it could be high temperature events, at least 10 million you know, uh, degrees centigrade we're talking about in space. So these kind of highly complicated phenomena is what lead to X-ray emissions. So once you study these emissions from Earth orbit, you, you can understand what's happening several million kilometers away. And you know, you can understand new science and you can understand new kinds of theories or possibly come up with new understandings of the mysteries of the universe. So that this mission typically is a year mission life. It could be longer depending on the kind of fuel that the spacecraft is carrying and how effective it is used, uh, the fuel particularly. Also, let's remember that this is a mission overall. As far as the launch mission is concerned, ExpoSat in 22 minutes will be ejected into its orbit, which is roughly 650 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. But overall, this mission is slightly longer. It could take one and a half hours longer because ISRO is also conducting another ex uh, experiment besides ExpoSat. ExpoSat is a primary passenger, so that passenger gets off at 650 kilometers above the Earth. Thereafter, the final stage of the rocket, the fourth stage, is brought lower into a 350 kilometer orbit, mm. which means it steps down about 300 kilometers. And there, that particular platform, they call it mm. PS4, PSLV stage 4. So there, there are at least 10 small, small experiments. What does the International Space Station do? It's a laboratory that's circling the Earth. Right. You have people there, astronauts there, who are doing experiments. What right. India does not have is a space station. So what you can do is you can use these kind of orbiting objects, keep experiments in them, and then you can do similar experiments, but of course at a much lower end. Right. And this is a low-cost way of accomplishing that, Raisha. Right, Siddharth, you uh, clearly explained the aim of the upcoming mission, Siddharth. But this is the 60th launch of India's PSLV rocket. Tell us more about the significance of it. So, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is essentially the identity of ISRO in many ways because this is a rocket that's been flying for 30 plus years. PSLV first flew in 1993. So, what we have to remember is we are now in the 31st year of the PSLV rocket and going successfully. What is most significant about PSLV is that this is a rocket that has had the best success rate so far in ISRO in the number of flights it's had. So, there are LVM3 or GSLV Mark III has flown seven times and all success. But what we have to remember is that in, uh, you know, 59 flights to date, the PSLV rocket has failed only twice. So this is more than 98% success rate we are talking about. Not too many rockets in the world can sort of boast of this kind of a success rate. At the same time, let's also keep in mind that PSLV is 70s or 80s technology, 1970s and 1980s technology. So even today, there's a rocket of that kind flying. There are not too many peers of PSLV that are flying today in the world. But this is a certain technological marvel given that PSLV is what really took India to space. Because after its first flight in 1993, PSLV went on to do landmark missions for ISRO be it Chandrayaan-1, be it Mars Orbiter mission or Mangalyaan, and recently Aditya L1, the mission to study the sun. These kind of missions, complicated missions, have been done by PSLV. So this is a legacy rocket as far as ISRO is concerned. And, you know, this is a worry-free launch because whenever there's a PSLV launch, ISRO are totally confident given the track record and reliability of this vehicle. And if you, uh, you know, look into the track record of this vehicle, right. over the last uh, couple of decades, the PSLV alone has launched more than 300 satellites from India and foreign nations. So whenever a foreign country, in most cases, when a foreign country wants to launch their satellite as a passenger on, on an Indian rocket, mm -hmm. most likely it's going to be the PSLV. So that's the kind of track record and reputation this has got at least twice last year. Singaporean government flew the PSLV rocket on chartered missions. That, that is, they bought out the entire rocket and their right, satellites that. were flown to space on PSLV. So that's the reliability we're talking about as far as PSLV right now. Right, Siddharth, so thanks very much for joining us for sharing insights with us. We'll, of course, be tracking this very closely. In just a short while from now, the launch is scheduled to take place at 9, 10 a.m. local time. We'll come back to you for more, but thanks very much for joining us here on Beyond at the moment.